G'day everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the Melbourne Pro Punters Panel. As usual, Darren Potter. Hello. Key Chuffy. Keyboard Warrior. Keyboardwarrior.com.au, racetrackrealfie.com.au, thank you very much. Hey, for, we're happy. Are we? I don't know, but I'm just going to pretend we are. So I want to start with something a bit happy. Okay. Yeah, we are happy. Good racing's in great shape. Isn't racing's it? Great shape. Everything's going beautifully. Never, never been better place. No, I just normally we give our tips right at the end of the show. Life tips. Yeah. I just want to start with one. If the punt's kind, even the punt's not kind, but if you find a couple of spare shekels and you live in the Melbourne area, if you can get to the Book of Mormon. Ah, uh, yes. I went and saw it yeah. last week. It is the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I call myself like a comedy aficionado. Okay. Most people call me keyboard warrior. Yeah. Fuck it. Uh, but it is a very good show. There is not one bodily part, uh, act, excretion possible that they don't miss and put to singing words. It's written by the folks of South Park. I absolutely. Is this cast a, is it, it's a, a movie. It's a play. It's, it's a, a play. Musical, it's a yeah. play. Right. They they launch it next week, but. Uh, shows you how well I go at home. Um, uh, 15 months ago, Racetrack Sue said, uh, that can do me for Christmas. I said, no worries. And then I bought it. I thought, that's Christmas all sorted. And then check the tickets. I go, oh, fuck the tickets up here. It says Wednesday the 19th, but Wednesday is the 17th. And she said, that says 2017. I went, <laughs> So anyway, we had to wait for Just, out, months just out by you. <laughs> yeah, just out by you. But we did see it, and it is sensational. So if you can see it, that is the tip we can give you for today. And it had huge reviews when it was on, and it's still on in Broadway over in New York, and it's, I'd actually had a couple of mates that had seen it over there and raved about it, so. <laughs> well, Dermot Burr, uh, no job, but we follow each other. Uh, he, his humour is pretty... Yes. Pretty Dermot, like, it. Yeah. <laughs> just coincidentally, he, he sent it out on... on, uh, on the night before, from London, he'd been to see Oh, same type of thing. So, yeah, I, even for this little YouTube stuff, I couldn't repeat most of what the stuff they sing about and everything like that. But it is just fucking sensational. Now, yeah. keen viewers will notice that because I am so happy, I've just had to temper things a little bit by just taking the edge off the happiness. Was it Shane Carlyle? Is that his name? Was yes. Shane, yeah. Yep. Yeah, Toowoomba uh, tips. Toowoomba tips. He gave a big shout out to uh, to Juppie, who um, he just wanted to know. Um, how he sort of tapered off by about part three of the last show. I was, I was in trouble by that point. stage. It was a warm day that day. It was particularly warm. <laughs> well, it's hot today, isn't it? Because Benalla's already finished. Oh, I'm all for these early starts and early finishes spots. Oh, it means you can go and do right. stuff in the afternoon. How'd you go to three back-to-back city meetings? Because it, uh, it sort of saw me out of your pots. How'd you go, mate? I only did two, so I'm great. Fresh. So tell us about the submerged logs, the ones we... Uh, yeah, well, last year I did Book of Mormon submerged logs, but different types. Last year and the year before, I did uh, try and bite off more than I could chew. And... Um, I found that back-to-back -back meetings were a real problem for me. That was a definite submerged log yeah. that I hit, and um, so I've learned my lesson. And uh, the reality is, Ralphie, we're in an extremely competitive, challenging marketplace and yep. industry, and you don't have to be far off your best to be underwater. Yes. You know what I mean? So the edge that you've got um, is there because you're fresh and you, you know you. Able to think through races and yep. capitalise on the, on the right sort of opportunities. And if you push yourself too far and you get jaded and you start to rush things and you just miss little pieces, and it doesn't take much to turn what is a, a you know a competitive edge over the marketplace to a disadvantage situation. And I found that was the case. So you know I just promised myself not to do back-to-back -back meetings ever again. And I so don't do. Are you brass going uh, the Friday nights? Is that sort of pretty much? Yeah. 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 Just so you can Saturday's your core business day. Yep, I do every I do you know, the two city meetings every yeah. like the Wednesday and the Saturday. Yeah, and when the carnivals come around or the public holidays, as long as they're not so like I was happy to do Thursday, Saturday, Saturday yeah. that was fine. Cup week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday I can cope with that, but it's just when they're back to back, particularly if it's a night meeting. Yeah, into a Saturday meeting, there's I'm, I'm not, there's no one I'm doing. A, both full meetings because it's just it's too much. I actually didn't know how I did it, but then well, we were talking before we started, and um, I, I went up to Lake's entrance last week with the family, and a few days in the water, and I was actually coming back really fresh. But to do that normally, no. And also, I think like I'm good tracks, 
So a lot more confidence and the tracks have been very well presented at the moment. Talk about that too. Um, but I think that also helps your mindset a little bit. And to me, in the, like in the middle of winter, like Queen's birthday weekend or something like that, so no, I'd rather just make less money and go to the footy and <laughs> yeah. tune out a bit. But yeah, we saw some very good racing. Mm. And some old mates going around where I don't think we uh, we saw a lot of there weren't a lot of race racing in the races, were there? Yeah, so, the tempos were, were just shit house. Again, Flemington on Saturday was populated by races where the, the, the horses weren't tested, yep. as they should be for that, that horses of that class, and the cream didn't necessarily rise to the top, you know, and um, you know that. I struggle with the understanding the jockeys not seeming to get the concept that if you're on the best horse in the race, it's really your obligation to, to do everything you can to make the test. And if you don't, then you just become a victim. Now, some horses, there's nothing you can do about it. But you know, a lot, a lot of the time, you just, you know, so on Saturday, for instance, if punters get Vince's data or other sectional times you can go and look at even the most, you'll find that the last 600s of most of the races so there's not a lot of difference in it because all of those, the, the vast majority of horses that are racing on Saturdays have got ability. Yeah. They can run 600 metres quick. Yeah. So if you allow the races to become less than their full distance, right, so whether it's 800 metres sprint home or a 600 or a 400, there's not a lot to, to separate the horses. There's not much between them. Now, if you're on the best horse in the race, you don't want that situation to evolve. Well, I like uh, I liken it to golf in this respect. No, you, there's no sport you don't get on, Jackie, but uh, give me this analogy. That any of us can beat... You know, Tiger Woods was a cliche there, and work Jordan Smith. Um, on one hole, if we flip one good shot. Yeah. yeah. And a par three. Mm -hmm. If we can hit the ball 200 metres and the par three is less than 200 metres, we can beat it on one hole. We are no chance whatsoever from three holes on. Yeah, no. And I think that's the analogy with racing: that the slower you go, the more compressed the field's going to be. The faster you go, the more it's going to be a test of talent. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Why don't other people realise this? What are we missing? Well, I think one of the problems is that <laughs> when you go to the further down the future and you go, yeah. it doesn't matter so much. In right. the provincial racing, it's more about position. It's not so much, yeah. you know, you can you can overcome all sorts of things because there's such a spread in, you know, oh, talent in the race, right? right. Yes, so yes. as long as your horse is well positioned, it doesn't really matter how quick they're going, you can just win the race, you know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't really matter. And, the, and they, the, the jockeys ride in a lot of those races, so that's where they train. Yes. And they get used to that. And they're not recognising the difference, the, the, the real difference there is between Saturday racing and the rest. It's a, there's a, a jump of it on average, it's about three lengths, right? Yeah. Between the next best yep. and Saturday racing. And the only way you'll get separation in those fields is to test them properly. And then you'll get proper spreads in the margins. But it, as soon as they start running slow for large chunks of the race, you'll get very compressed finishes and because all those horses can run fast for 600 metres. So like, the best example of it is Mubari winning that, whatever it is, if that's what it's called, the Adelaide horse, yeah, yeah, Steve yeah. Arnold, Little Malay on. At a walk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there was just less than a length between eight runners. You know, there's just no, the, the form is completely meaningless. So, so it's unhelpful. It's just, and jumping back me up here, I, I, th I think it sounds to me like that's why you're not on Twitter, because you would be a keyboard warrior at the moment. Like, <laughs> you, you would be qualified to be a keyboard warrior. I've just, just spent there. the last fortnight listening listening to Basil Zemplis and Ads for MKR. <laughs> well, really is Raffi, I've, 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 I've just come to accept that's how it is. So I'm just, yes. I'm describing how it is. I don't know what the solution is. I'm just talking about it and I move on to the next race. You know what I mean? I just move on to the next race and I try and recognise those races. So where that's possible. And, you know, in hindsight, there was every chance that was going to happen in that race. I anticipated that Dwayne Dunn would take the sit on top me up because the horse is suspect at 1400 meters like you know anyway like it just it was all that was always going to happen and i'm if anything i'm critical of myself for betting in that race like i should have known that was Were a you very i was saved on jubio oh, taught me up as a horse back oh i was no it, it leads to an interesting 
um, dynamic when it comes to hindsight bias. In other words, yeah. saying, I should have done this after race where you got it right wrong. Because the horse pulled up late. Yeah. Now, the week before, uh, I was on a two bit play on Last Special and Aurora Globe. I liked the source of rest. I said, This is my days, but I think these two are going to be in front of it and will be enough. Now, they both, both pulled up short. So you don't know. So you can't price on something you don't know. So my question to you is, with Jubio, you're not going to know that it's going to turn up Wayne, but he had a history of... <laughs> so in other words, I should have priced more of that in, to my price, yeah. that he could have put up short, because clearly the horse had issues along the journey. Does that make sense? You know, <laughs> so for an unsound horse, you're being stupid to yourself, pricing it to its best. But yeah. for a sound horse, you just got to cop it if they get injured in the running. That's right, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah, I mean, all, in, everything's always easy in hindsight. Yeah. You know, Jubia, Jubia had two runs. He, he produced his career, career best at Ballarat yeah. with a perfect run, a perfect ride, everything went perfect. Yeah. And then he was favourite two weeks later and scratched with a foot absence. Yes. And then they get him out for 70 days and bring him back. Like, but was it a foot absence or a foot absence? No, yeah. they're like. Oh, I know a bloke's father who goes to Thailand to fix his teeth. So, <laughs> no, in this case, it was definitely a foot absence. Oh, that's all it was. Yeah. All right. But so, you now they're not. They're, 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 they're. I mean, horses with feet problem. Really, they are one of the. They're, they're difficult punting propositions. So on on, uh, on Thursday, we saw a race. I think it might be all connected to uh, to uh, surf that Damien Lane gave me. Um, where summer win now was it a month ago we gave Andrew Mallion yeah the best pump up you've ever heard any jockey get yeah certainly on this honestly every time we give any jockey a rap on the show I just wait for the <laughs> for the next time I'm on one and they slaughter it that's right and every time we, we give someone a bit of criticism you're just waiting for them to ride one centimetre perfect to boot you that's what happens every time that's that's the problem with jockeys they're, they're the, the, horses, the horses are more easy to predict than the jockeys. It's just the Daniel Kahneman we're about to get to, actually. Um, thinking fast and slow. So, but with that, we gave him a big rap. Yeah. Sandown for proactive ride. He could have been boxed yeah. in. He got out. Now, uh, on Thursday, were you on summer wind? Yeah. I, I stayed out of the race. But as soon as that race happened, uh, you, you've killed your horse's chance of winning there. You, you, your horse had a bit of ability, and you handed up to a 50 to 1 shot. What was your reaction? Where was it 50 to 1? It was 200 to 1. 200 to 1. Well, what was your reaction post race? My race, my reaction during the race was, what are you fucking doing? Yes. No, Andrew, no. Yes. Um, no, I, do I, not I, hand up to that horse because as soon as you hand up to that horse, Ollie's going to handle you. Ollie's drawn wide, coming across, he's just going to see you there and pin you behind the yes. ruffy and you, you're toast. Yes. You're completely toast. Like, and, the, and then when you said the sectionals in that race, the, I mean, honestly, that. Well, I've got them here. Uh, after Sandown, I think they went, did they go benchmark Sandown? They went uh, uh, oh, a bit, no. bit above, and he's forced it out to go a bit above. Well, they, this is Vince Carding's work. Um, so they went 10 lengths below benchmark on a good track. And if we're talking apples to apples, uh, let's get another 1400 race, if you don't uh, sort of know the times. Um, they went seven lengths lower than the, uh, than the Grand Rosso race later, that was a walk as well. So several lengths slower than a walk, just for the apples to apples, same track, same distance, same day. So because I use Twitter to promote my business and promote the fact that I know what I'm doing and, or don't know what I'm doing if they want to argue with me. So I, what I really got, my first reaction was that, you've killed your horse's chance by handing up to a hundred watch shot. I thought, no, I'm actually going to watch the post-race coverage here, and they, which I normally just turn it on and turn it off, and they've played the replay. David Gately's correctly said the first 800 in 52 seconds they've walked. Yet neither Richo nor Gator picked it out, of which I mentioned. Now, I'm mates with Richo, I don't really know Gator, but I'm, I'm just telling us it is, and he copped it left right up there, good or bad. Richo then later retweeted it, and I haven't spoken to him about this. And I thought, why would he retweet that? Because I didn't include him in it, and I just said, you, you've got to say it as it is. But that's, now to me, it all adds up, because and we've said this before, the jockeys are ridiculously sensitive to criticism. People might say that we are. I don't think so, but if we are, we are. 
We are telling a fact. The fact was, he went much slower than he could have, and he chose to hand up. But we're not saying he's an ordinary person. We're not no. saying he's incompetent at his job. We talk about the mistakes we make every week and what we get right and wrong, because uh, it's a judgment call, and our seats aren't going 60 k's an hour, and we're not in any danger of chuffing by part three last week, was. But we're, when it's no big deal. All we're doing is saying this is what happened in a race, and this is what either should have happened definitely, or could have happened, yeah. or how come that didn't happen if we're asking a question. Now, the stewards asked Andrew Milling, who said, well, it didn't want it to, I, I, I thought it was a distance doubt, so I thought it was better to nurse it. So, to me, you're not doing yourself any favours if you explain to people why you got something wrong by then using the wrong methodology. Yeah. <laughs> you're better off saying, yeah, but Ralphie, he believes that. That's my point. That's, he believes that. So that's the, you know. No, no. My, so my point is, who's educating these people? We've touched on this a few times. It's, it's ironic because I think uh, we've often said this. He's, uh, his sister is one of the best judges of pace we've seen in Victoria, uh, and she consistently gets right. It consistently goes quickly and rightly. So, anyway, I said it. I've got a feeling that, given the same stable, that Damien Lane was sticking up for his mate a bit. Andrew Millian, and if he was, fair enough, but he, yeah. he's had a crack at me Friday night for something where I actually wasn't having a crack at him. I was asking questions, and I was surprised Trey wasn't that close. But I want to thank Damien for sending me that tweet because I actually had to have an all nighter on Friday night to work my way through getting my Saturday stuff. And it got me adrenaline going a little bit and <laughs> saved me a cup of coffee and a Red Bull. So <laughs> it's not dramas. But, uh, but you know, I, I think. If jockeys want to use the forum, they can use it. But don't uh, be having a crack at people unless you want to come back to the other way. How do, yeah, you, how do you see it? Because you actually talk to them, why don't Yeah, no, look, I've, um, I've got no problems with... I think it, we've got to open the game up more. Yeah. Like, don't be afraid to chime in. Well, read, read what he said to me. So, so the first thing I want to say is that... Yeah. I'm, I'm repeating what I said on a previous show, so I'm just repeating it for those what, that didn't watch the previous show. None of, none of what I say is personal. It's just race analysis. So, okay. in in the in the case of Summer Wind, in the case of a lot of horses, it's, I can just I'd love to discuss this with Andrew or any other jockey. It's never a good idea to hand up position if you're going slower than what your horse's natural tempo is. So if you are restraining it all to hand up a position, that almost never helps. You're taking away an asset. You are giving an advantage to someone else. Now, yep. the, the other circumstances of it being a, the extreme outsider of the field and an ollie outside of it just make it diabolical. But, you know, I could say the same about Cat's Wish and Fast Approaching handing up to Diamond Baroness on Saturday. That's inexplicable. There's two jockeys, Craig Williams, Simon Baster, who Steve never Baster. hand up, Stephen Baster, sorry, yeah. who never hand up, and they just looked over at Benny Thompson and said, just, you know, make your own arrangements. Yep. Just, and Catch Wishes over racing at the time, like it's inexplicable. Yes. So, like, I could make that same judgment of a, of a lot of cases, and it, rare, it never helps the horses that do it. Yeah. Over racing and being crossed is just a terrible combination. It leaves you in an awful position in that race. Yeah. You're much better off going at a natural tempo, and if they want to cross you, you're making them go faster. That leaves you in a powerful position. Yep. So anyway, it's just it, it's um, it's repeated. So yeah. what did I say first before so, you say Damien replied? We, and and by, I just want to preface this by jumping. You know, some people go at Damien Lane or at yeah. you know, Craig Williams or whatever their hashtag. I never ever include any jockeys' names in it. I'm talking to punters. Yeah, so, no, you haven't. You... So, in simple terms, to to riders, we're talking about you, not to you. And if they want to, well, that's up to them. But I, I think that forum, and that's why Twitter's worked so well for the racing industry. Yeah, is for punters to make conversations with each other. And let me assure you, to jockeys, the their suck hole supporters, or anyone in between, that you get found out pretty quickly on Twitter if you've got no idea what you're talking about. And if you're well, just a hater, I've, and... I've made an expert out of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would just say to the jokers, if you're going to engage in the Twitter stuff, you've got to take the good with the bad. You know what I mean? The reason I'm not on Twitter is 
because I know I haven't got the time yeah. to deal with the whole thing. So yeah. if, if I'm going to pick and choose, that's not right. So, so I just don't do it. The thing is, Bots, if you're going to get into arguments with idiots like me, I'm going to drag you down to my level, <laughs> but you want experience. That's it. So Ralph tweeted, right a interim hashtag walling report with Trez. If it wasn't, if if it wasn't three to four links better than the winner, I'll go hey. Don't know why he was so far back early. Hashtag vomity. To which Frosty replied, how about because he doesn't have any early speed, Ralph? Question mark. Hashtag grandstand jockey. Hashtag keyboard warrior. Sam Swinnell, who's um, used to be on RSN and has now gone out and... Where are you, Sam? Because I need an account with that spread betting company that you started <laughs> up. That reminds me, I've got to look into that. Um, at Damien Lane, you are a gun, but that is absolute rubbish because it came from well back last start, you showed no positivity, cost of the race. To which, of course, Ozbet had to chime in. <laughs> so Ozzy said, he's done absolutely nothing wrong on it. Winner has handed up to a thousand to one chance and has been blessed to get the run. Ralphie replied, what abuses me, Ozzy, is I was personally surprised, not critical where it was, and starting and stating it was un an unlucky race shape wise. So anyway, to, to, to cut it off. And then, saying, but Ozzy made an interesting point in the next one. Yeah. None of them look very interested. Wayne got stuck behind MD, who was on a mission to go slow. <laughs> no, no, 100%. And, and that's, that's what we talk about with race shape. And then, so I, I looked at the replay and thought, is he, is he being urgent here? Or is he being deliberate uh, in pulling back? Yeah. I don't think so. And what, what comes to your mind when you know the form, as we do in our area, we think, well, Generally, errs on the side of going forward lane, hence his great yep. record. Um, so I, I don't know why he's that far back, but I'm not saying he's done the wrong thing. I was saying that I'm confident the horse was two or three lengths better if things panned out for him perfectly. He got beaten that much. The winner did get the saloon passage that Ozzy said, yep. and that he had to go wide because they stacked up. Now, I'm looking at Vince's data. They've actually gone fast the first 400 and then jammed the brakes on. And then he's he stuck behind it. Yeah. So what you do when you if you're doing things properly, I think, is you're looking at a race. You think I think that's what happened, and then the figures tell you what happened. Is that fair? Yeah. In, in general, yeah. I mean, yeah. how, yeah. how yeah. Yeah. you do it, you know. And we might say with Melbourne. With, oh. So I didn't. I didn't. As you know, I didn't do. I didn't do Friday night. Right. Yeah. So I knew we were going to have this discussion. So I, I reviewed that race. Went back and looked at it. So my. So I'm only talking about. With, high, with the benefit of hindsight. My viewing of the race is that uh, Frosty did everything he should have to hold a position early. Yep. He, he, he made sure he was one off the fence and he held a position. Yep. But the pressure in the race come from outside, which you know, often does, he drew yes. four, I think. Yes. And um, he just, he was looking, he, he could tell he wanted to stay off the fence. Yep. He didn't, he was being careful not to get into a position where he got crushed from the outside. And one come across in front of him, Weirs, started to over race and the jockey restrained it and come back on top of him. So I think him getting back slightly beyond or beyond midfield was a result of the Weir runner coming back on him. Yeah. Not not anything that he chose to do. Yeah. And then he was in, he was dictated to, to as to where he was on a horse that was never going to be forward of midfield. And so I backed that horse at Cranbourne, well, I know the horse, right? Yeah. And it was coming out of two fast races, the, the Yarra Valley race and the Cranbourne race. Yes, yeah, that's where I knew it say. Um, you know, it was something for the punters there. It was a really good bet at $8 at Cranbourne. And it wasn't such a good bet at Mooney Valley at a shorter price. But anyway, so I, I don't think he did. I, I can't see that he's really done much wrong. He might have been able to force the issue more at about the three or four, after about three or four hundred metres when he when he took that ease that allowed the weir runner to come across in front of him. But just really splitting hairs. And, in the end, the horses had to come around them, and just the way the race panned out for him, he had to go very wide. Yeah. He's rounded them all up, and it took what was almost a miracle for Steve Arnold That's right. to, to get out from where he was on the home turn to win the race. So, so I think he's. I think in all the circumstances, he's very unlucky not to have won the race with that ride. So, so we're actually not disagreeing on anything. No, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just yeah, going, no, no, I'm, I'm mean, telling the punters 100%. my review of the race. And the one thing I will say, punters, in terms of um, if I can offer any helpful hints, you have to be very careful of horses coming out of fast races going up in distance. They're, it's a very, it's a hard circumstance for them to hold their rating. Yeah. So, so in saying that 
I'm vomiting. And then it's a two or three lengths better horse than the winner. Thank you, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Gary's got the, uh, the refreshments for us. Um, that's not me saying that the horse is lost. Yeah, no, that's, that's it's just not. You're saying that the horse was unlucky. And and the one thing, it's not sitting on the fence, because if Damien wants to uh, have an argument about his ride in the United States or in a show and it's out at sale, let's bring it on. But what I'm saying, where I had to say the question mark is, the Mooney Valley, from the shot that we get, the jockeys are running riding away from it. What? Uh, is it from the mile? Oh, you're from the mile, yeah, when they jump, yeah, yeah. So, so you, you, you're trying to see, yeah. but you can't be certain. And so all I'm saying is, I'm not a keyboard board, board, board warrior because I reckon that's someone who hides behind I am. Uh, an amenity to start with. And I think it's someone who's not un, who's not accountable, which I'm not. Uh, I'm fair game, if you want to have a crack at me, Damien, that's fine. But, and, but you're actually talking shit when it comes to me saying that I'm not... Uh, I'm critical of all jockeys or just for the sake of it. Um, what we're doing, as you said, Pops, is just business. Yeah, it's just business. Yeah, it's not, absolutely. I think if I could make, if we're I was to make any body. criticism of Frosty there, it's just don't take it personally, mate. You know what I mean? Like, you're a great jockey. You get so much right. I mean, you're outstanding on Goldstream on Saturday when the other jockeys handed up to you in, re in reverse, you know? Like, well, what there, you're gonna, there's gonna, you, it's just part of the business that, you know, punters, when they've done their cash, they, they it's a natural reaction to, you know, to look for reasons and, you know, maybe, and talk, it's easy to vent, you know what I mean? Like, a, I, I just wouldn't, I just would never, if I was any jockey out there, I'd never take any of that sort of thing personally, because it's not meant that way. And well, Frost, if you ever want to come on the show, you're more than welcome. It, there's a Sergio, and, uh, Sergio Paradise and Titus O'Reilly t-shirt we've still got <laughs> for the first jockey who comes on the show. But it, it, it's a wider thing. Whoever's advising the jockeys, can I say this? Either you're in or you're not. You probably said the same. You're, you're not in. And if you want to go in that way, someone like who, who would you say go? Who uses Twitter well? I'd say Daniel Moore uses yeah, Twitter buckets well. Is, buckets uh, is pretty cool. Engages with people. Yep. Uh, and you take it or leave it. Yep. Um, who else would? I don't think there's a long list. Uh, oh, Michelle uses it. I think the gun does. Uh, I think. I mean, I don't. Oh, oh, gun does. Yeah, gun does. Now, now this is where I say oh, gun cops. Boy. Gun cops are both ways too. Yeah. And he, he uses it to put his hand up yeah. when he's made a blue, which I think you know that's there you go. tremendous. Yeah. Right? yeah, so someone like Michelle, I'd say, uses it more for publicity purposes. Correct. And that's fine because she's just now become a sort of star away from racing. But if you're going to do it, you do it for a reason or you do it for no reason. Otherwise, just send out a message. But that's fine. But if you want to try and banter, well, then be up for it and be up for the good and bad, if, as you're saying, that our doll is doing. But I don't think it does you any good, and that's why I say I don't ever include the name of a jockey in there. And but I've had Jake Bayless and Ben Allen apologise to me for rides on Twitter where I didn't include their names on it, and I'm not saying and and they got it wrong. But that's right. We give that fuck. Speaking of uh, about of Dala, it'd be remiss of me to mention not mention Nathan Snow. I think so. Just because we have to Just mention him every week. Yep, yeah. He could be a special guest. Isn't he? <laughs> no, no. Where's he going to come now? Is he being we, aloof? We might have to send the SES out to find Snowy because I don't know where he is. Um, boys, another ride that caused a bit of consternation on Twitter over the weekend was Widgie Turf. Uh, Daniel O'Sullivan, who's doing a very good job, job with his service, and Chris and the boys up there at Tower Bay. Um, another example of horrible, unnecessarily unnecessary negative tactics on Widgie Turf. At least he ran the best sectionals and can go in the media black book. Didn't miss too many there. Uh, am I, am uh, I uh, see, uh, Daniel to me, I think a Daniel is a pretty classy individual. Yep. That, I read that and I think I'm starting to poison him. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's that's, that's some, the type there, of stuff once. There's, yeah. there's a potentially a bit of venting there, <laughs> Dan. Well, uh, he was obviously frustrated. Pos, you were, you're on the winner. I was on Widgie Turf too. And on Widgie Turf, so you're probably in a I good... I was on Widgie Turf. You're probably in a good spot, but then Ozzy chimed in with so what, 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 the camp don't like participating. Hashtag go back, hashtag run on, hashtag teach the horse to saddle, hashtag salmon. Yeah. So that, is that salmon trout leave me out? That that's just, that's what you'll finish up eating, I think. I don't know. Ozzy, if you can explain that to ask Dee Carr, you'll know. So I think Ozzy's touching a good point there. I mean, it was foreseeable. Okay, so I spent, when I did the map for that race, I spent a lot of time trying to work out if there was a way that Widgie Turf would end up within 
four lengths of the lead. And no matter which way I spun it, I thought he was going to be outside that, what Vince calls the elastic band. It just, yep. it just seemed that that was his lot in life in that, in that race. And having reviewed the race now on uh, Monday morning, Widgie Turf run right to his best. Um, uh, unfortunately, he ran into a talented, lightly raced horse that um, has got gone super. Has got tactical speed Noble. and a wide draw. Yeah. So, noble tactical speed, wide draw, one by one. He was going. He would no matter what way, what position you give Widgie Turf, he was going to be very hard to beat. And Widgie Turf's done a tremendous job to get within the neck of that horse. So, you know. They've run seven lengths quicker than Diamond Baroness, who was gifted a very soft lead. <coughs> and just, I just want to have on the record that I won on the Diamond Baroness race. I'm just mystified by Craig Williams and Simon Bastar looking over. Steve Bastar. What did I say? Simon. Sorry. Yeah. Simon's his far less talented brother. I've got such Simon on the brand. Sorry. Looking over to allow that horse to cross that cheaply. But anyway, um, and the, the other. The other 1400 rider race where Steve Arnold was gifted a very cheap lead, yeah, yeah. again, was all, also seven lengths slower than the um, Noble race. So that, that's just too, that's too big a gap. Yes. So Saturday horses. So with Noble, went super, brought up the pots for fighting it. Um, with Widgie Turf, the ride itself positioning early was okay relative to the speed, no drums at all which to the eye was a surprise when the figures came through. Um, what's cost the race on Vince's breakdown to me is that between the 800 and 600, he just sort of lost that length and a half, and that was the difference ultimately when he got beaten. That I think much. that's right, because that's where he got outside the, you know, like the, the gap between him and Noble at yeah. that point just stretched out a bit. And, yeah. and, and when, with Noble going that good, yes, he was going to be a very hard horse to run down. And, Getting within the neck of him was a pretty good effort. So, so what I'm saying is that uh, it's a matter of semantics. Definitely wasn't a slaughter by Bo Mertens. What we'd, we would have liked, and as Ozzy said, is most other stables, they would have said, bang, put it there. But, so put it a bit outside of its comfort zone. I think Regan Bayless post-race from Noble said, yeah. I, I was going too quick, but I just had to go. Yeah. And my thing is, you win a lot more races by erring on the side of going too quickly than way too long. But the point, the point is, this is one of the uh, we're getting to the, a tipping point here in race analysis, yeah. where people are over analysing things a bit too much. Sure, no one was going above benchmark, yeah. but that horse was travelling really naturally. Yeah. Well, so I, I know what Regan is saying, but yeah. I, I think there's a lot of advantages in travelling above average tempo if your horse is. Yeah doing it naturally yeah yeah that, that's a great way to win races so I just want to underline that that wasn't a bad ride by Bo Mertens I send out find my keyboard warrior.com.au stuff uh, best and worst rides and best losing rides every week and I didn't put uh, for a reason it was not a bad ride if he had a, and, and and there is an argument if you watch the horse really closely I don't know if you pick this up but I heard him say it uh, via Brent Sarraf in post-race interviews on the Kremlin um, that he, uh, he probably needs blinkers, and maybe that's one yeah. of the reasons why he lost a bit of position. And Bo Mertens on the Friday night, the night before, ran a cracking race in the last race in Mini Valley. He's a kid who is going well, and we will call it as it is, because if, if someone's not riding well, we'll say it too. But, so it was just a matter of semantics. I think the horse should have won on the day with a slightly different ratio, but I think Nullable is the one I definitely want to be on next day. Um, yeah, well, I'd say I really like Bay Mertens as a jockey. I particularly like yeah. backing him at Sandown, his owns races. I think there was a lot to like about that ride. And, you know, if Bo wants to analyse himself, look at it, like, he, he probably could have done a little bit more in the first 200 metres of the race to hold a position. That's but awesome. I think he was trying to make sure the horse didn't get over racing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's splitting hairs a bit. But then, once he got where he was, to save the to read the field, yeah. to save the ground he did, and then just come out across their heels and give his horse an opportunity to let down and win the race it was pretty good. You know what I mean? He did, he did a given how far he got from the his main opponent, which ended up being known as Noble, because he ran down all the others. Like he, he rode the horse well enough to get past that door, to get past Mr. Sneaky, so he's got past those talented horses. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was just another good one in the race that was really yeah, well ridden. 100%. And 
you know, so he did a lot right as well. So, uh, you know, you're more of worse races than that. So, in summary, uh, to the industry sponsored people, uh, unlike us, don't expect balance because you're all so full of sycophants and so full of people who won't give an opinion. We give an opinion. And if you want balance between the two mediums, i.e., people who get paid by the industry and, yeah. and only say nice things. Well, well, we'll go too far the other way, and uh, Daniel probably might look at the figures now and say, well, so he didn't, didn't get too far back. And, you know, Daniel's the smarter uh, analyst as there is in the country. Sometimes your eyes do lie to you, and we all know that. Um, so that's the balance. Uh, good on Damien Lane for if he was sticking out for his mate inadvertently, Andrew Mellion, or for himself. I don't give a shit, um, but he's there to do it. He's, I'm here to do my job, and you're here to do it. Yeah, can I just say, when well, I, did, I, did, I only read a bit about what Matt Stewart wrote in Sunday's paper. Matt, if you happen to watch this or someone puts you onto it, you're a fucking cherry picker, mate. All right, um, I'll do my job here. This is the end of part one. We'll come back where we talk. We'll talk about um, a bit about Geelong um, yesterday. Um, oh, the puggies. Alex White's article in the paper and my comprehensive review of the Allen Border Medal.